Hey friends, I'm back with another video and this is going to be an updated version to my tips and tricks for new and returning players. So if you're new or returning after a long hiatus, this video may help you. It's got a lot of different tips and tricks and things that you might not know or might have forgotten over the years if you used to play but you've been away for a long time. I think everybody will find at least one tip or trick in this video that they will find useful that might help them out in the future. If you've never played EverQuest before, you're not going to have it installed. My suggestion when you're starting off on EverQuest is to download the game directly from everquest.com, the official EverQuest website. You'll find it right here in the upper right side of the screen. It says download the game. You just want to left click on that and you will automatically download the game and then just install it. I'm aware that there is a version of EverQuest that you can download and get from Steam. I would suggest not doing it that way just because I've never done it but I've I'm told that the Steam client isn't very good and you cannot open multiple instances of EverQuest when using the Steam version. You can only open multiple instances of EverQuest using the regular standard version. And if you ever plan on multi-boxing or anything like that, it's going to help you a lot. And I would just, just get the normal client. That Why bother with Steam if you don't have to? That's all. If you're making a new character, I would always suggest, regardless of what race you choose, because as you see, there are so many different race options here, and whatever race you choose, especially if it happens to be one of the more evil ones, over here for deity, if you have the option to choose agnostic, so say example, we're making a rogue, a warrior, or even an enchanter or a mage, we have the option to be agnostic over here. Agnostic under deity, it just means you don't worship any specific deity. Uh, it's it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> you guys fight amongst yourselves. And being agnostic in EverQuest has more benefits than choosing a specific deity because agnostic characters have a better chance of being welcomed in more locations and more cities. This is more important in classic EverQuest, especially if you're playing on a TLP server, than it is on live EverQuest with all expansions enabled, just because you may not need to be in a whole lot of different cities and you do start off in Crescent Reach for the most part. But if you do plan on maybe visiting Freeport and you're playing a Dark Elf, Agnostic is the way to go. They're not going to automatically attack you. But of course, if you're playing something like a Shadow Knight, Agnostic just is not an option. So you're going to be worshipping in a Rook no matter what. Likewise, for a High Elf, you can... Be agnostic if you are something like an enchanter, but if you're a paladin, agnostic is not an option. You have to worship Tunar. After you've installed your game and you made a character and you first log in, this is what the user interface looks like. It's a complete tragic mess. A total unmitigated disaster. How do you make heads or tails of it? You really don't. The only way is to start adjusting things to your liking. How do you adjust things to your liking? Well, you can left click on assets you see here and you can move them around. Sometimes you might be able to stretch them like this and uh, and resize them. If there's something kind of useless like this basic movement thing, once you've read it and understand everything, you can just hit close. Similar with the chat window here, you can stretch that and make it larger or smaller. You can right click in the chat bar and you can select new tab. And I would suggest making some new tabs and giving them whatever properties you want. So say you want a new tab here where all the say and all your tells and all of your uh, group chat goes or you might want this tab here where all of your skill uh, prompts 
go over here and this is obviously combat spam and this is main chat another thing you can do is you can rename the tabs so this just says chat 2 we changed it to skills so here we could select rename and we can type in skills and hit ok see now this says skills likewise with this tab here we want to click on it we can also rename this one and say i don't know just so we don't get confused with other stuff we can call it chatter or whatever you want some of these buttons that you want to move might be a little more difficult than others like this one here you got to grab it at the edge where you have that little cross section where it lets you move it likewise here with the character information window it can also be difficult to grab because you don't want to just stretch it like this you want to be able to actually grab it so it looks like when i have it down here in the corner i'm able to grab it and move it as i like there are also little windows like this with these silly little buttons these are just little notifications that they give you like they have little messages in them and you can click on each one of these to read whatever it is and then you can hit close once you're done reading it it can be difficult to adjust your ui as not all the assets are available right away in the very first part of the tutorial but once you get to the main part here where you, there's all this extra room to run around you'll see that all the general assets of the ui have become enabled here's where you can really do some stuff first i would say hit alt w so you can toggle off this little window selector up here unless you like it if you like it you can keep it i hate it <laughs> I never use it so I always that's the first thing I get rid of next you can see things here like your quest window this is something that doesn't always stay open but if you want you can move it up to the corner or something else whatever is comfortable for you then you have a window like this here this is the quest overlay it also gives you a rundown of the quests and if you don't want all this information or you don't want to have all your quests active at the same time on in this window you can click them off how do you get them back if you hit alt q you will be able to reopen your quest window and by clicking on this you can put them back in that window again so down here in the center is this is the targeting window this is whatever you happen to be targeting it says ginger wisp now because i'm targeting myself if i'm targeting this guy elgist then it says elgist in this window you can also resize the window to your liking i usually keep my targeting windows a little bit smaller because i don't feel the need to to have it be overly large here we have the group window whenever you happen to be grouped with people this is where their information appears usually i keep the group window right below my window where where it just it just that's where it lives that's where it always is in my opinion next we have the effects window what are the effects well if i click on this spell for example here this is a buff a spell a beneficial spell that shows up in the effects this is minor shielding and any beneficial spells or detrimental spells of appear here so this one gives me extra hit points and stuff here's a little songs window a lot of times i usually put this underneath the effects because these are just different effects usually done by bards this here is the uh spell casting window i usually move that over here on the left here's the targets target window i usually put that up there this is the compass you see here i'm facing north now i'm facing east now i'm facing south now i'm facing west i usually put that right under there oh here we have the extended target window i usually keep that underneath the regular target window over here you know what i might actually move everything over slightly and make this just a tiny bit larger i think my group window is also a little bit too big i just try to keep everything sort of the same size here's the actions window a lot of times i'll either keep the actions window somewhere over here or out of sight down at the bottom right behind the picture of me there are way too many windows open right now i usually scoot this stuff over a little bit but i'm going to close some of these macro windows so to do that you right click you go to window and you can hit 
close. And I'm going to do that with each one of these except for the main one because it's the only one that I really need. And I usually move it somewhere along here and I try to put that in the corner with the spell bar. Sometimes I lower it and have it around down there. This way I have all this space for my chat bar and I usually stretch it out so I have plenty of room for my chats. This leaves me all of this viewing space where it's not really being impeded by anything else and it just looks nice. It looks clean. Later on I will need more hot bars so I can go over here and open up more hotkeys like that. And then I usually just start stacking them one on top of the other. Another thing about the UI, say you went to all this time and trouble to get this UI looking nice. You can go to, you can go to options by pressing Alt O and then you can click on copy UI on another character so you can import this UI to that other character. That will mean that that guy will have all these settings. And sometimes it takes a minute, but this comes up and you can look for the name of the character and the server that they were on where you created the UI that you really, really liked. And you can select it. You can click on all of these options to do load the socials, the hot buttons, and the loadouts. And you can click on copy and it'll take about 10, 20, 30 seconds or whatever it is to load it all. But once it's loaded, it will appear as your as your UI. There are some great quests that you can get in Plane of Knowledge that you can do starting at level 1 if you like. One of them being the Tricks of the Trade quest that gets you a really great bag. How do we get to Plane of Knowledge really quick? Open up your inventory hit Alt Advancement and go to Specials. Scroll down and select Throne of Heroes. If you're on a server where this is enabled, you'll see 1 slash 1. That means that this ability is available for you. So you can click on Hotkey and make a button and drop it down in one of your hotbars. Next, you can click on it and it will transport you to the Guild Lobby. From the Guild Lobby, we're going to run out this way into the plane of knowledge. At the plane of knowledge, you will probably see a lot of people. Do you feel like you're moving too slowly? Here's another command you can try slash claim and press enter. Using the claim command lets you claim different prizes. If you don't have anything interesting to claim, you can hit cancel and you can check the daybreak store instead. Do you have an ungodly amount of daybreak tokens? Well, you can spend them on cool stuff. There are bags aplenty and oh look, here's some mounts. One of my personal favorites is the black wolf and I think I'm going to grab one. Just hit buy now and then complete purchase. Now we have access to a gray wolf. You can left click and hold on the gray wolf paw or saddle, whatever you want to call it, and move it to your hotbar. And then you can click on it and poof, you're on an awesome wolf. Actually, this is a black wolf. I was calling it a gray wolf because I was eyeballing that one too. Now you can run really fast. So here in POK, you're going to go down this way and you're going to find this NPC, Sekalna Galnor, if that's the way I pronounce her name. And you're going to hail her and she is going to display a number of quests. You're going to scroll down here and select the bazaar tricks of the trade and you're going to accept. Now this is a really simple, really quick to do quest that gives you a very nice bag. So we're going to run this way to the bazaar. And before we run in the bazaar, we got to talk to someone named Nebo uh, Walzit. So this first door is the guild lobby. That's where we came out of. We want to pass that and keep going to the bazaar door which is this giant door over here but again remember we're not going inside right away we're going to talk to Nebo first we're going to hail him and just answer his prompts until it says task stage completed next it says talk to Nerman within the bazaar so now is when we actually go inside the bazaar and we just have to click on the door and it says entering the bazaar. As soon as you enter the bazaar, you want to go straight down the hall to this main room here 
and you're going to find this guy in an orange jumpsuit named Nerman, and you're going to hail him. And then you're going to select the prompts. I would suggest reading the prompts because they're full of important information. Always read the quest prompts, especially when you're new. They provide a lot of backstory and lore. And if you don't read it, you might, might miss something really important. Next, it says, find the teleporter to the Blue Griffin Hall. So we just turn barely to the right and you'll see these bluish looking signs here. I mean, it's more like turquoise with blue on it, but this is the Blue Griffin Hall. So we want to go up this way, up to this little teleport pad, and you want to run up on it. And it says, task stage completed. So as soon as you get in, don't go anywhere. As soon as you get in, you want this first doorway to the right. And you want to go up this way. And this NPC right here, Elan, Nerman's buyer, you want to hail him. Also, again, I would suggest reading everything and selecting the prompts. Next, it says, find the teleporter to Red Dragon Hall. So we're going to go back this way and leave where we came from through this doorway onto the teleporter and go down again. Then we take a left here, and this is the sign for, you guessed it, the Red Dragon Hall. So we go up this way, and if you have access to the maps, it even shows you this stuff on the maps. See, there's Blue Griffin Hall, Red Dragon Hall. To open the maps, you would hit uh, Backspace or M. At least I make sure that I always have it as Backspace. Again, as soon as you get in here, you don't have to go far. It's this first doorway to the right, and you just go straight up. And there they are, straight ahead. Nerman's traitor. Hail them and answer their prompts. And again, I suggest reading everything. Now it says to return to Nebo uh, Walzit in Plane of Knowledge. And again, you want to go the way you came. And you see there are hundreds of merchants here. And this can actually cause you a lot of lag. So here's another little quick tip. If you hit Alt-A, it opens up the bizarre window. And what you could do is you can select this button here at the bottom that says hide all traders. You select that and every one of the traders is hidden. This reduces your amount of lag a lot. Now you might say, but what if I want to buy something? How do I find the trader then when I've hidden them all? Well, this is another <laughs> awesome tip that you could do. So let's say we wanted to find a, a broom. I don't know. I'm being silly. But say we wanted to find a broom. Maybe we want this crude adepts broom over here, right? And, and we want to buy that. Well, once you select what you want here in the traders window, you can select find trader. And when you do that, you will see a little trail that appears. It's very faint, so you have to look hard. But you see here, there's like a little ghostly trail that appears and shows you how to get to them. You follow the trail and you see once you get to that trader, that trader is visible. That trader appears. So you can go up to them and then you can right click on them and you can purchase all of their goods and services so you can keep hide all traders on all the time and just use this search tool to find your trader and once you have found them you can go to your actions window here and you can click on end find so now that we're done in the bazaar we're going to go back to the plane of knowledge to talk to nebo and hopefully finish our quest so we come out we take the first left and then left again and this is the way back to the plane of knowledge. And if you're looking here at the map, you'll see it. It says plane of knowledge and you can just click on the door to exit. Once we're back in the plane of knowledge, we're going to go over here to Nebo and hail him. We're going to answer the prompts and then we're going to get our reward. And you see here sturdy travelers pack and a trader satchel. We get both of them. Select the option and you'll see it appears here in our inventory. So now we have this excellent 10 slotted bag that holds size capacity giant and it has a 50% weight reduction to it. Which means anything that you put in this bag is going to weigh 50% less than what it normally weighs. The second bag that you get is actually very heavy. It weighs 25 and it has no weight reduction at all. I recommend not carrying this bag around with you, but 
putting it in your bank. So that's what we're going to do. We're running over here to the small bank in Plane of Knowledge where we're going to store this bag. And it's still a very useful bag as far as expanding your inventory space here in the bank. So now you've got 10 slots, 10 extra slots in the bank where you can put stuff. In the bank, there's also another backpack that you can grab just so you have a little more room for more stuff. While you're still in the plane of knowledge, after doing your brief quest to get your uh, 10 slotted bag, we're going to go and grab ourselves a mercenary. That's right. Mercenaries can be really helpful and it's part of the tutorial quest. So why not grab one of the cooler looking ones here in the plane of knowledge rather than getting the boring human ones that you can get in the tutorial zone. I'm actually going to grab a gnome mercenary because I like the gnomes. They're small, they're compact, they don't eat much, they don't get in the way. And I used to always use like ogres a lot for the tanks, but the problem with the ogres is that they're so big that sometimes they end up getting in the way a little bit. And with the gnomes, you can see, you could see everything in front of you and they don't get in the way. So we're going to right click here on the mercenary and there are a lot of folks that might suggest that you get yourself a cleric because a cleric can help keep you alive. But if you have a gold account, meaning you're paying for your monthly subscription fee for EverQuest, then I would say get a journeyman mercenary, right? All your mercenaries should be journeymen, actually, if you can, if you can get them, if you're paying for that, that gold account, right? Always get the journeyman one if you've got it you can uh, get a tank journeyman mercenary right and if you have extra slots as you see here i have three slots so i'm also going to grab a journeyman melee dps right in case i ever need that and i'm also going to grab a journeyman healer because it always is good to have a healer in your back pocket if you can and that is it that is all i can use and honestly i should have grabbed the healer and the melee dps first because what i want to use is the tank and that's my recommendation is to use a tank mercenary within your first i don't know 20 30 levels because they're going to be so much more useful than the cleric really sure the cleric can help keep you alive and heal you but the tank the tank is really going to do so much more it's it's pretty much going to help you level up. It's it's going to take all the aggression for you and all the damage. So it's it's going to be so much better. So once you have your mercenary, you might want to go back to the tutorial zone because like I said, you want to play the tutorial. You want to get your your beginning armor and all that stuff. How to get back to the tutorial zone is very very easy. There's a couple of different ways to do it. One you can log out, you can camp out, and then under the buttons where it says, you know, enter the world or whatever, there's one that says enter the tutorial, you can select that. Or you can come back here to Sekalna and you can hail them. And one of the options that she says down here in the chat is that she could send you back to the tutorial. So you can close this, we don't have to do the quest, we can just opt to be sent back to the tutorial zone which is the mines of glooming deep once you've hit level 10 or so and you find yourself in crescent reach this here is crescent reach on the second floor you want to go up here and talk to a guy named disgruntled boab you're going to hail him and he's going to say some stuff and you can again i recommend reading everything because you learn a lot you learn a lot of lore but i'm just trying to keep this short so you don't have to you know go through all that stuff so here we go we got a quest we got a little bottle of stuff that we got to give to a council member the council member is right here right down the stairs and to the, the first left right here and it's council member Rikesh over here and we're going to give them a bottle and this is what we get we get a belt 
okay? And honestly, I've already had it because I'm on front of I and the stuff is tradable. But now I can get it again. So let me just uh, accept. And it's a belt. It's a decent belt. It's 7 AC, 10 hit point, 15 mana. It's got some intelligence, wisdom, and agility. But that's not all. Wait, there's more. So once you give them the bottle, okay, they have another quest for you. But you have to read. This is why I'm emphasizing reading everything, okay? Especially if you're new or you're a returning player who hasn't played this game in like five plus years, read the stuff, okay? It's it's important and some of it is going to just make, it's gonna add to the entertainment. Someone worked very hard to write these scripts. So you're gonna read it and you're gonna see it's uh, allegiance is highlighted, okay? You're gonna say allegiance and then you're gonna say, uh, encourage him to drink it all clear and say yes okay i'm gonna say clear and then we get the no the other quest we get this pink potion bottle called potion for boab so now we're going to go back to boab so so close you know so quick it's just the easiest quest of all and here we go disgruntled boab so you're going to give him the pink potion and poof boab gets turned into a bunny and you have a selection a couple of different selections here you have two different prizes because the two quests together make up a one of these things it's a, a heroic a heroic journey type of thing so that's you know that's that's sort of another thing so we get this mask here the mask is pretty awesome in itself because it has some stats it has some wisdom intelligence and strength right but the mask is also a clicky so you get the mask you click on it and it gives you an additional buff and the buff gives you uh to 25 points of poison resist so really nice and then here comes the second prize where it's you can get either a dagger and a shield or you click on the first option which is a wand and a shield so if you don't have a shield or you want a better one-handed blunt then you know there you go or the dagger again you can get that I say get the dagger if you are a caster because the next tip is going to get you a better one-handed staff so let's hit select that way you can practice your piercing ability and the next one is going to be getting you a one-hander so here we go we are going to the third floor on this elevator we're gonna click on the elevator and it's gonna take us up to the third floor okay right here right next to the elevator is Vunder the dark quests level 10 you want to hail him and read out everything he says. The word learn is highlighted. We click on learn or you could type out the word learn and hit enter and then sample and he get, you get a quest. Dark heart. You hit accept and he wants you to kill apothecary shelga with no one watching okay so we're gonna go back down and i would suggest getting the elevator if you're new i'm on a mount that's why it didn't harm me <laughs> so we're back down on the second floor and we're gonna go here where the herbs and medicines are and no one's currently watching so let's kill him right now he's right here apothecary shelga gonna attack him and send my pet after him and he's a barbarian as you see we didn't have any negative faction at all and it gave us four percent xp if you're on another server it doesn't have like a, a forever xp bonus it might only give you one percent or two percent something like that and this is what we need right here shelga's pouch of ingredients and sometimes he drops barbarian blood which i hear is used in trade skills I think it makes a potion or something. I'm not sure. But that's it. We go back up to the third floor. And we're going to turn this pouch in. These are some of the easiest quests in the entire game. Don't expect future quests to be this easy, folks. Especially considering how good the reward the rewards are for these couple of really easy quests. And I, I highlight them in the tips. Because you can get some very nice gear doing these few quests. So here we go. We uh, we accept. It's the Staff of the Dark Apprentice. And if you're a caster or a priest or even a shaman, you will get this item here. See, it's Cleric, Druid, Bard, Rogue, Shaman, Necromancer, Wizard, Mage. And it's, it's really nice looking too. It's got a great looking graphic. Let me uh, equip it so you can see. And there you go. This really sharp looking, awesome looking staff and it's recommended level of five uh, but you have to be at least level 10 to get the quest okay damage eight delay 20 
and it gives you stamina, intelligence, and wisdom, and 5 savers magic. It even gives you 4 AC, 10 hit points, and 10 mana. Great little weapon to have from, you know, level 10 all the way up to level 30-ish, you know, or more, or more, until you find something better, until you find some defiant uh weapon or something like that so it's 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 pretty good i i use this weapon a lot and again you know now you have a shield i happen to have that same shield already or something similar this is the simple defiant wooden shield this the difference is this one's called a simple uh consigned wooden shield which you know actually since this one's no trade let me w use the consigned one because even though i've equipped it this one can be traded or sold so i can pass it to someone else or sell it in the bazaar that's one of the great things about the server for own of i so that's how you get yourself a simple weapon here's another tip if you're just level 10 11 12 you want to hunt some stuff and get some decent xp you don't have to go far you can hunt some stuff right here in crescent reach there are cats there's alligators that are level 14 that we can kill they are right here by the water you can also come here into the bear caves the bear caves right here in crescent reach the bears are perfect level they're like level 12 and they're also great xp occasionally you'll find yourself some bear pelts they're great for tailoring, or maybe you can try to sell them to someone who does tailoring by using the barter tool. The barter tool is slash barter and hit enter, and you can go through some stuff in your inventory and try to sell it to other players. Have the bear caves become trivial for you? Well, there's more. Once the bear caves are trivial for you, you can come out here and fight some skeleton ogres. They're all over the farm over here. There's even a few zombies. There's even higher level skeletons if you go past this giant hut or house or building over here all the way up to that second bridge in the back by the waterfall. And yep, plenty of undead and skeletons. There's even some wandering drunkards here that seem to be out just because it's the holiday quest. So you gotta watch out for them because they are scows ready to attack but the undead on the other side of the bridge are level 18 so you can basically get to level 20 in this zone very easily and once you're level 20 you could venture out into blightfire moors and as i mentioned in the previous tip of hunting bears hunting things that give you trade skill items you can use the barter tool the command is slash barter hit enter and there's all sorts of things that you can sell that will give you money i don't happen to have anything right now but the way it works for example is let's say i the pond alligators hide was worth something and you would click on that left click on it you would hit search and if something was of value to somebody if somebody was making an offer it would show up here matching bylines and you would click on that and then you can click on sell and you sell the thing to them you don't have to be anywhere near the bazaar. You can do this. This works in absolutely any and every zone out there. It's great. You can get rid of unwanted crap in your inventory if you're not going to use it and uh, sell it to other players who want it to do trade skills. Great system. Great for making money. This works even if you are free to play. Only a gold account can be a buyer but anybody including free to play accounts can be a seller sometimes you might find yourself leveling up so fast that you some of your skills lag behind one way to check on this is open your inventory click on skills and look at things like abjuration you can see here it's only at 24 out of 60. how do we get it up and get it up quickly well you can make a macro I always make this kind of macro. To make a macro, you want to use your actions window over here. You go to actions and you go to the socials page at the end. It's the last tab right here. And then you want to hit the arrows until you get to some empty buttons. And then you would right click on one of the empty buttons and you'd start filling it out. I already have one filled out, so I'm going to open that. I call it spell practice. You can make it whatever color you want to and what i do is slash pause 50 or if you want to be more precise you can right click on the spell you plan on spamming and see how long it takes so this says it takes 25 
to cast it's like more like 2.5 right so what you need want to add to that is at least a one so maybe 35 would work because there's usually a global cooldown so let's actually try that 35 for each one of these you cast spell eight and then you wait for 35 ticks or half seconds or whatever the uh these are not seconds i just want to make sure you know that it's not 35 seconds it's just 35 ticks or clicks or whatever uh because the 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 time or or you know these these numbers are not necessarily full seconds just so you know and um it's just wait 35 and then cast the next spell wait 35 cast the next spell and the last one well you don't need to wait anymore so we hit accept and then we'll press this button and here you see i'm casting the spell and i cast it again right away and then i cast it again right away that means we've got this timing spot on it is perfect so let's try it one more time and you'll see here we're getting skill ups in our skills tab i think maybe the timing isn't spot on because i cast it once now i'm casting it twice i didn't cast it a third time now i'm casting it i think it's off by a tiny bit so what's the good idea a good idea is to maybe add two seconds to this or two ticks or whatever so let's make it 37 okay maybe that'll be just enough to make sure it casts five times like it's supposed to so let's try it again now that we changed it to 37 that's one cast here's two there's three should be four four and there's five so it's perfect one click on here and you cast a spell five times now it's real easy for you to just sit there and keep clicking the spell yourself but this gives you a moment to multitask you could sort of be doing this and maybe something else too or let's say you're playing two or three characters at a time well you can get one started then tab over and get another one started so like if you were three boxing like a mage an enchanter and a shaman or something and you can get all three of them sort of practicing their spells and it just sort of helps it helps you get some skill ups now let's say you have a spell that's uh, detrimental what if evocation or conjuration was lagging let's take a look at that my conjuration is great it's at 60 out of 60. my divination on the other hand is only at 10 my evocation is only at 45 so evocation that's like detrimental spells right so we can remove the shielding spell that we've been casting let's go to direct damage and let's take the level one spell here burst of flame and we'll memorize that we can target our pet or we can target our mercenary it doesn't matter which one if you have a guild hall with a training dummy you can use that instead if you're on the test server there's actually training dummies that you can spawn in the arena zone so here we go let's try to cast this and we're casting it on our pet so we're not harming anyone else and it gives us our practices see evocation is going up and you can do this with any kind of spell if you need to practice healing which is alteration skill then you can practice healing your pet or the mercenary or if it's uh, buffs you can practice buffing yourself or others uh, just make sure that they're not being annoyed by you casting spells on them and you don't ever want to practice casting a spell like burst of flame or any negative effect spells on guards because they'll run up and kill you on the spot they will slay you dead here's where i'm going to get into the hero's journey system a little bit with you click on the eq button go to quests open up hero's journey from here i usually just click on either one of these little highlighted things to open up this main window and then i'll close that one why do we have all these steps i don't know it's weird it's it's weird i i definitely feel like it's weird i think it should just open up this window and that's it but i don't know i don't know why it wants to highlight certain things and this has sort of quest collections and achievements for example uh alternate advancement so once you're level 51 plus you start getting aa points and by using you know putting using your or spending your aa points you unlock some of these advancements or achievements um then you unlock stuff by getting your epics like uh 1.0 1.5 2.0 and so on there's uh different keys i guess some of these i'm not familiar with you know 
uh, you unlock some just by leveling up level five level 10 i'll get one at level 15 and you get little points and accolades and whatever by doing some of these but the hero's journey this one is the big one it gives you some some fun prizes or or whatever so if you uh you turn in your note to crescent reach you uh you can do something like making a name for yourself and this is doing a number of quests and then you can view the reward and the reward is a set of jewelry. You get two earrings and two rings. And they all have some nice stats on them. So they're really great. And they're free. All you have to do is get some quests from Skinner Bazooth, who's up on the third floor in the Taylor's area. And then you do the Vunder the Dark Heart, which we already did. As you see, it's checked. That's where we got that staff from. And then Council Age Shay web of fears so very easy it's just i just have to do four more quests and i can get this jewelry and so can you by completing those quests and there's tons and tons of quests like this as you level up you will unlock more and more of them and they'll offer you just armor armor that's usable for you for your level and for your class it is amazing and it will basically give you a roadmap of where to go and what to do at your level so you can always have something to do always something fun always something challenging it's a great system and i suggest checking it out and there's a whole bunch of other things here too there's like slayer there's like events here and stuff about overseer so you can check it all out but the hero's journey is by far the best one because not all of these have like great amazing rewards some of them you just unlock a few points but this one this one has something oh this one here it gives you a belt and a range item just by doing these uh four or five quests and again they're all pretty good pretty easy to do so check out the hero's journey next i suggest going up to the second floor again that's right back up to the second floor another fantastic quest that you would like to do is located here forge of knock on the second floor of crescent reach and we're going to run up here and we're going to talk to smithy bronson we hail them and again i emphasize reading everything since i've done the quest before i'm comfortable with not reading it but I think anybody who's new or just been away for a long time, read it. You know, like I said, somebody's worked hard to write these stories up. We want Knowledge Tools. So we're going to hit Accept. And we got the Knowledge Tools quest. And this is going to give us a fantastic item. And you're going to run out here. And we're going to Blightfire Moors. Because that zone is where the quest begins. So once you're in Blightfire Moors, you're going to come out here. You're going to see task stage completed. Unfortunately, it's nighttime. So it's very difficult to see. So I'm going to turn my gamma up a little bit. This is consider this another little tip trick or cheat if you want. So you could see a little better at nighttime. And it does help. It does help quite a lot. Some folks get mad at me when I turn my gamma up on occasion but you know what i want people watching this video to be able to see it so if if you don't want to watch it because the gamma is a little high click away click away don't watch don't watch the video so here we go we got our first rock breaker null we're gonna attack him i'm also gonna make sure to set my mercenary to tank and i'm going to set myself as main assist that ensures that the mercenary is going to act as a tank and not just act as dps because if you don't have them set to tank you can't be mad at them for not tanking or you know taunting the monsters so here is the first thing we have to loot we have to loot this hammer so i'm gonna put all my hammers in a bag over here i'm gonna set it to the side i'll keep it open and uh yeah so we enter the cave and we want to take the first left here where you see the uh mucktail miners and we want to kill them because we want their mining picks these are some of the few that have the mining picks that we need to complete this quest you need four hammers and four picks and the hammers are super easy to get the picks are a little more complicated because you got to make sure you're defeating these miners and there we have our first pick 
And I'm going to put it in my bag here. And here we have our second pick. And there are four nulls that spawn in this cave. So this is why I say come in here. And uh, oh wow, we have a named. I've never seen this named spawn in this room before. So this is kind of interesting. I've seen him spawn in other caves before. Just never in this one. So this is a special occasion to me, man. I hope he still drops one of the picks. If not, I'm going to have to look in another room uh, for another pick. All right, and we leveled up. Mucktail mining pick, so sweet. He still drops an ordinary mucktail mining pick. He also drops some icor encrusted boots and a blight fire glove pattern. So this is the last guy we got to pull up here on top of those rocks. Once you've defeated your last null and you've got your four hammers and your four picks, you're going to run on back to Crescent Reach to turn this stuff in. Back here at Smithy Bronson, we're going to hand him all the hammers and picks and get our reward. Here we go. We hit give and there we have it. Ore Hauler's Haversack. It is a 75% 10 slotted weight reduction bag. That is great if you don't have any weight reduction bags and it will help you carry more stuff help you carry heavy, heavier stuff. So I recommend doing this quest, especially if you're new and you don't have any real equipment. This bag can save you. If you want to learn trade skills, there's really easy ways to do it. For example, here at Second Skin, which is also on the second floor of Crescent Reach, there's this trade skill quest person in the corner. You can hail them and talk to them and you can uh, select training. And then you can hit ready to start and they'll give you materials so you can start crafting right away and making stuff. So they gave me some patterns and right here you don't even really have to buy anything. You can buy a sewing kit if you want to or you could use the one that's right here on the floor. And all you do is you combine these two items and hit combine to make a simple belt. And then to make it even faster you can close the kit, reopen it and type in the word simple in the window and there you go you see I had no skill at all I got a, a one skill now because I made that one combine and you hit make all and then you just hit combine and you're gonna be combining until all these materials are used up then once you use them up you can go to this person and ask them for more supplies. See, they even say supplies. So there you go. I got more supplies from them already. And you could do this for just about every trade skill except for fishing because I've never found one of these for fishing. If you find one for fishing, you can let me know in the comments below. But you could do this for smithing, tailoring. There's even one for poison making. But remember, only rogues can do poison making. The same with alchemy only shaman can do alchemy also i'm pretty sure that a rogue needs to be about level 20 to begin poison making and in a shaman needs to be level 26 or something like that to begin alchemy but these simple these simple quests can get your skill up to 54. once they're at 54 you can go and get your trophy. Once you finish the task and you made your 20 belts, you could turn them in for a little bit of faction and XP. And then you can move on to the next one again until your skill is at 54. Once you get your trade skills up to 54, you can go and get yourself a trophy. So we're going to do that now by going here to Freeport. Once you're in the Freeport zone, you're going to run out and then bank right and come over here to this little camp where there's going to be people that will give us a quest and look there's one of my guildies right now going to get the same kind of quest so we want to go here to event coordinator boobly digs because boobly is just tops she's just awesome hi boobly how are you today and we want to go over here we want to say test we want to do the tailoring test so we're going to click on tailoring but read everything she says because she might have some important information for you. And here we go. We got the tailoring task. And here in our overlay is everything we have to do. We just have to craft one of these items, uh, one of each of these items, and then bring them back and hand them over to Judge Marion. She'll judge us. She'll give us a scorecard. 
then we hand the scorecard back to Bobbly Diggs and we get our trophy. What is the trophy for? It gives you a boost in your trade skills. It gives you a skill modifier where you'll be able to craft some things that you might have normally failed at. Because why? It's improved your skill a little bit. And these trophies will evolve. So you'll start off with the beginner's trophy. So you want to have it equipped like, like here in your, your uh, ammo slot or your range slot or even in your primary or secondary while you're crafting. And as long as you got them equipped in one of them slots, they will evolve and they will become eventually a master trophy. It will give you a really nice bonus to your trade skills, really make a difference. So let's say you get your skill up to about 300. The modifier might put you up to about 350 or 345, around thereabouts. So that's a huge difference. And it's helped me to craft things that I normally would have failed at doing. Next is sort of a two-in-one tip because you might be a caster or regardless of what class you are, you might need either tombs or spells and you want to find them in the Plane of Knowledge library. It is the best, most convenient place to find most of your spells for most of your levels until you've leveled up past 85 where yes, you might need to go to different zones to get some of your spells. But an easy way to find which spell merchant that that you need for your specific class for example i am a level 25 necromancer so i'm going to click on the find tool and let me bring it up over here so you can see it it's under actions the little actions window over here you click find and it brings up this window which gives you a list to all the npcs in the zone and one of the most important ones are the spells and here you see necromancer spells level 1 through 25 well i think i have those but i might need my level 26 to 50 spells so let me click on that when you click on that you'll see a mystic thread appear in front of you it's like an umbilical cord that if you remember seeing the movie donnie darko it's just like that so you want to go and follow it you want to follow it up towards the library so we're going to go over here and keep following the trail it just takes us down down to the basement because that's where they think the necromancers belong in the cold cold cellar you know what i think belongs in the cold cold cellar enchanters because they're the ones that steal free will by using the charm spell what do necromancers do we just wake the dead the dead have no free will it doesn't matter we're giving them a new lease on life but that's okay they can think what we want what they want we know necromancers are not evil. So here we go. There's the necromancer spells and you can buy whatever spells you need. Another thing is if you want to make sure you're buying the spells for the right level, you can use these filters up here. You can check for cost or level. I always do this. So I'm making sure I'm looking at the lower level ones first or, or whatever, however you want to do it. You can even search for a specific spell. Like for example, if I type the word spirit here and I hit enter, I'll see any spell with the word spirit in it, like spirit tap. Similar to the find tool is something called the waypoint command. The waypoint command works in a similar way, except it's sort of more flexible. So let's say you didn't know where an NPC was and the find tool for that NPC didn't work at all. Well, you can use the waypoint command. How does it work? You type in slash waypoint and then you can copy the location of whatever it was from the website and use control V to paste it here in EverQuest. And then you can press enter and it works the same way. Now you have a mystical path taking you up to that waypoint. And this can work in just about any zone at all. At, le on, at least I don't know of a zone where it might not work it may be in some dungeons or something i don't really know but it's a pretty cool command just like find it can fail on occasion so there's there's that and where's this waypoint it's right here and i just you know it takes me over to the mysterious presence overseer merchant up here behind the library i just figured he was a shady fella who hangs out in the back of the library so let's go have a waypoint taking us over there to him another tip 
is to use the parcels and how to use the parcels. Right click on a parcels NPC and you'll know it's a parcels when they say parcels and general goods over here. So there you'll see multiple tabs. You want to click on the parcels tab. Then you want to open up your inventory and say you found some plate boots of some kind that you can't use, but you have an alternate character that you think can make use of them. Or maybe you have a bazaar merchant and you think you can sell these things in the bazaar or something like that. Well, you could send these to your alternate character through the parcels vendor. And this works very easily. You click on the item you want to send and you go over here where it says to and you type in their name. And I'm sending these to Fezzlewig mostly just as an example. And you click on send and this NPC gives you a tell and says, uh, I will deliver the icorn encrusted boots to Fezzlewig as soon as possible. And when Fezzlewig logs in, they will be able to retrieve the boots from the parcel merchant. Likewise, if somebody wanted to send you money or something like that, it would work in a similar way. For example, I will try to send this to myself. I think it works just as an example. So say I'm someone else and I'm sending this to Fezzle Wicked. Well, you type in Fezzle Wicked, you hit send and there you go. It's in the parcels and that's how it would appear. Also, if you look at the top right here, you will see a little package icon appear in your personal info window right there it says you have a parcel delivery so you come over here open up the parcels guy you can click on this and you could say retrieve or retrieve all which would retrieve everything that's in your parcels and that's how you use the parcels npc similar to the parcels npc you have a banker a banker stores all of your goods and loot right now there's a little window here called shared bank and this means that if I have something that I want to give to someone else, like this pattern, for example, I can drop it here in the shared bank and then I can log out and log back in with another character as long as they're on the same account and they can access this from the shared bank. Last tip is that you can activate certain skills automatically during combat. So I'm going to show you by pulling this giant over here who is appropriate for my level? He's a good dark blue. So here we are. We're playing a beast lord. We'll get off the mount here. And I can kick as a beast lord, right? And sometimes I like to multi-box. So let's say I'm multi-boxing. And I don't want to keep tabbing from one melee class to the other. Just so I can keep tapping on the kick button, which I'm doing now. So I can right click and hold until this menu comes up. And I can go to auto activate and I can select that and now every time kick is available my hands are up here it will automatically trigger kick now this is great especially if you're just soloing playing alone or whatever uh, of course if you're in a group and you're fighting a really nasty caster or something you might want to save your kick to try to interrupt spells because I was unaware of this, but I'm I'm told that kick can potentially interrupt spells. Like it might have a, a very small stun type effect. And now, wow, we got an ad. So I'm gonna have to slow him down. There we go. Let's see if we can't dot him a little bit too. That way, you know, my spell will do part of the work for me. I'm also going to slug down a damage shield potion. Hopefully it'll take effect. Oh my god, how am I getting all of these ads? <laughs> this is not looking good for me. I think I'm going to survive. It's just sort of a pain in the ass. I really didn't want to have to fight three of these guys at once. But they insisted, they insisted, and now I'm going to have to kill all freaking three of them. And I'm going to make sure to refresh slow as well. Because I do have a cleric mercenary. So I'm again, I'm not too worried. I just hate that. I have to uh, do all these while I'm doing a video. I usually just like to show one little battle to prove, <laughs> show you that the thing works and then that's it, you know? I'm usually not trying to get into a full-fledged battle, especially just while I'm trying to do some, some useful tips and tricks and that sort of thing. But it looks like I'm gonna be kicking their butts and finish them, finish them off. They keep stunning me though, so that kind of sucks. 
I think it's just because they're so damn big. And I leveled up. Hooray. Hooray. Yeah, they're taking, I think, 27 damage each time they hit me from the from the damage shield potion. I'm also occasionally proccing 742 damage with the poison. So use poison, folks. It might help you survive. Oh, my God. You dick. Stop running. Oh, my God. It's going to pull more stuff. Yeah, again. Well, guys, I think I'm going to end the video here. I hope this video helped you. Um, I have an old video that has tips and tricks and stuff, but you know what? That video is so old and it's just a little bit cringy to see now. And as popular as it was, I think it's good to retire some old content, especially when my, just everything, everything about my, my production quality has improved so much over the past year you know i got a boom arm i got my my sound issues all fixed up nicely so i just feel like it's just better in general and uh i'm real pleased with the quality that my videos have now so that's why i say you know it's it's a good thing to uh to update some of my old videos at least that's how i feel I like updating old stuff when it's kind of out of date or like I said it's not as good as my current stuff. Ooh, at least this guy doesn't have Spirit of the Wolf so he can't run as fast so I should be able to kill him before he aggros anybody else. See you should have thought of that buddy because I killed three of your guys. I don't know what the hell you were thinking that you were going to be able to uh, defeat me with just one of you. So that's it for this video, folks. I hope you find these tips and tricks helpful to your gaming experience, especially if you're a new or returning player who's recently come back to EQ. My intention is just to help those who might have been away for a while or are brand new, because maybe you got curious about the game after watching some of my content. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, you can give it a thumbs down. Whether you like or dislike the video, I invite you to leave a comment. Let me know what you liked or disliked about the video so I can adjust the formula in the future. If you like what I do here and you'd like to support me and support the channel, consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. You can also join the channel as a channel member. Channel members get special perks and privileges like a link to join the private discord. If YouTube memberships are not your thing, check the links below for a link to join my Patreon. Patreon patrons get similar perks like a link to join the Discord and all the videos on Patreon are ad free. If you enjoyed the video, you can also leave a super thanks. A super thanks is like a little mini donation saying thanks for the video. It was informative. I'd like to thank all of my current YouTube channel members Patreon patrons, and those of you who might have left a super thanks or super chat recently, thank you very much, guys. Helping to support the channel really does make a difference, and I appreciate you very, very much. Thank you all. That's all for this one, folks. Have a great day and a wonderful tomorrow.